I thought it was interesting research, but I'm not surprised at it. We're all instant experts these days. If we need to find the answer, we just Google it. And it's a good thing they've banned mobile phones at trivia contests, is what I think. <laughs> now, I mean, Tom, there is, I guess, a serious point here about the, the way in which people are becoming more firm in their, in their convictions, in their belief. Sure. Well, what the scientists are also telling us about the internet is it's... it's killing our memories. So, uh, you know, perhaps the explanation is we're forgetting what we don't know and then uh, <laughs> going around talking it as if we do. I have very strong feelings about it. I think the um, internet is a vast repository of knowledge which is accessible democratically, which is fantastic. But I would also say about this that the constant deference to experts can be very problematic. I mean, you should t we should talk about this in the context of Bronte Doyne, a 19-year-old who died of a rare liver cancer. She was mm -hmm. published on Fairfax Today. Her doctors told her to stop Googling her symptoms. And what I think we've seen in medicine at least, is an orientation towards patient oriented care. So patients have more control over the kinds of questions they ask, the treatment that they get, They're, that doctors are required to be more consultative and that's a good thing. I don't think it's good enough to just say, oh well now ordinary people get to access this kind of level of information that it's somehow a problem for all the experts. I like the idea that more knowledge is available and that people can access it whenever they want. I think that's a great step forward for human society. So a little knowledge is a good thing, a lot of knowledge is an even better thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Should right. be the slogan of the internet. <laughs>